Hello, my name is Craig Basher, and welcome to the Factory Design Suite 2013 Workflow Demonstration. Our first workflow is going to be about how we would create assets, publishing our asset. So I do this with Autodesk Inventor. I would start creating a 3D model, and a 3D model can be done from any source. It can be done from the Inventor model, it can be done from GATIA, SOLIDWORKS, I just step files pro e if I have my own file already created I can actually go and open up the 3d model and use our asset creation tool and inside the asset creation tool I can go ahead and create a landing surface this says that, that surface will sit on the factory floor there are key parameters when you're creating models especially with inventor maybe you want to use those so you want to use the key parameters checkbox there properties are very important to me so that I can do searching on those properties and as if I want to use those parameters I could use them in what we call variances this variance has two a single sided clamp and a double sided clamp so I want to be able to use those two variances let's look at now publishing the file so the publishing can be done either done in the local space of your hard drive or the cloud space there is a cloud factory warehouse storage location that you can share among your peers uh, locally or worldwide our next workflow is going to deal with placing the assets and we're going to reuse those assets in AutoCAD architecture so a lot of legacy drawings are done in AutoCAD so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the main facility drawing and facility drawings usually have external or ex-referenced objects in them so each area or each cell can be opened up and modified and so in this cell I'm actually going to go ahead and place some of the user assets that have already been created so here's the one that we just created we're going to go ahead and place it in our model we can use exact locations or we can use uh, random locations it really doesn't matter so it's, it's an AutoCAD block that you can place on the screen and it can be moved around just with AutoCAD tools so we're going to go ahead and place the rest of these assets if I want to reuse an asset, I can just use a regular copy command. I, mean, I just just another AutoCAD command. I don't have to be an AutoCAD architecture expert. I don't have to be an inventor expert to create my factory floor. It's very simple. Let's go use some system assets. The, we have some conveyors that already come and ship with uh, the factory design suite. So we'll go ahead and place two of these conveyors in here. And then when we're finished placing the assets, we'll go ahead and have this asset be updated with Inventor. So I can link this back to the Inventor file that was created. So now it's going to go ahead and automatically place the rest of those assets on the screen. Now that I have the assets created, we can go back to AutoCAD and make sure that our main drawing is up to date. And to do that, you basically want to reload the external reference here. So you have different commands for opening, but we want to do what's called reloading. So we'll go to that cell and just reload it and it will update the main file. Our next workflow would be to edit those assets or reposition those assets with Inventor. So you could reposition with Inventor or AutoCAD. Now repositioning is it has nothing to do with Inventor. It really has to do with clicking and dragging. Um, you don't have to understand constraining. You don't have to be that you know expert modeler to do this. There are tools that can help reposition tool allows me to use basically a 3D gizmo to rotate and you can rotate on axis 
you can move on axis you can move on a plane like an XY plane or an XZ plane or a YZ plane so here I'm just going to pick on that plane and move it over to the right position other edits that we can do would be to maybe delete this riser and put in a different riser so we can do a, a search on our assets we don't have to kind of point and click we can do a search and pick from the list here now once we bring our assets in here sometimes assets are not the correct size so we'll place our asset in here and then what we're going to do is there is a dialog box that you can turn on it's called factory prop properties and you can come in here and change the length so I hit the update and now I have the new length now other things that I want to do is go in here and actually look at maybe adding some more conveyors maybe changing the size of the conveyors so I'll go back to my factory assets my system assets and go into conveyors and bring over uh, basically a curved conveyor another straight conveyor and as I'm placing I don't have to worry like I said to use these constraints I'm just gonna use these snapping points those can be created as you're publishing data as well so I'm gonna go back and update this width of this conveyor by just picking on the width on the property area and then I can hit the lightning bolt with the plus sign and that updates all factory conveyors of that type you notice how the curved conveyor updated automatically we'll use another property here to change the variance from a single sided to a double sided clamp here so there we have our assets change so we repositioned them a little bit better and now what I can do is add other types of assets like our robots that we want to raise objects from the clamps or place things on the plant plant clamps now that we have all our assets created we always want to make sure that we're updating the AutoCAD drawing so I use the sync to AutoCAD and every changes that I made in the inventor model will update that AutoCAD file so here we go over here to AutoCAD alright our next workflow would be using a new command called asset chaining so there are times where you want to draw multiple conveyors or maybe safety fence or cable trays you know instead of drawing each asset or placing each asset one at a time you'll find that some of these assets can be just drawn with or created with drawing a line and so I just draw where I want that object to be placed at and then we would go back and update the inventor model so we'll go back and sync that to Autodesk Inventor And once you have it into Inventor, you can also manipulate it. You can go back and edit. So I don't want my cable tray to be on the floor. I actually want it to be, you know, above. So I'll go ahead and raise this up a few feet. And we're repositioning again. Remember that I can snap to the geometry with my little gizmo on the edge, or I can pick on a point. And then you can rotate it and you can move it. You know, as I move this first one here, it will move the others for me automatically. Now, adding other data is another workflow that has to happen. So you may have 3D models already created and you just want to insert that geometry. Once again, it can be any type of geometry that you want to use, CATIA, Pro-E and then you just place it, you, just, you notice that it'll just snap to the floor and I can place it on the screen in addition to placing 3D data you might have the need to bring in you know a scan of the building so point cloud data can be used 
to really understand how this new area is going to look with inside our manufacturing area. And you can do things like walkthroughs and rotate just to kind of get a look at it. So that brings us to our last topic here about data aggregation and bringing all this data together. You know, data can be be created from AutoCAD architecture, Revit, Inventor. Uh, so being bring, being able to bring all that data into one software can cripple your hardware. But but Autodesk Navisworks has the ability and the technology to allow me to do that. I also have the ability to do things like markups and create different viewports and do more of a construction review of what's happening. And I go ahead and I can go ahead and add that data that I created with Inventor, that new cell location. So we'll go ahead and open up and use that Inventor file that create that we created from the factory uh, AutoCAD architecture to Inventor. And then now we're going to bring it back into Navisworks. Now with the Navisworks file updated with the new cell, we might want to take a look at how it interacts with the rest of the building. You know, so we can actually uh, reduce errors in our construction time by going through and making sure that there is no clashes or no interference. So clash detection is a big part of the construction, you know, and using the laser scans as well can be brought in as well. So we're going to do a class detection between these two areas. And you notice that we have a red line. That means that there's probably a, a very large interference. So we can see it right there where the the air duct is actually interfering into the air, the water sprinklers there. Now I can select objects one at a time to make sure that we're not having interference on objects or we can do uh, a tree selection and the tree selection will allow me to go back to Inventor to make a change to the model so that there won't be any interference so once again we'll actually change the asset properties of the air duct so that it no longer interferes just to take a second and then once we'll have that change we'll actually go back into Navisworks and check for that clash again so to do that we just go into Navisworks and we refresh it we don't even have to close out Navisworks I'm just gonna hit refresh and it's gonna bring that model back in with a new size ductwork now we can go back into the clash detection and rerun those results. And we'll see that we have more of an orange versus a red. And that's because, you know, we still have a tolerance of 0.5 meters. And it, so it falls within that. So here are the three additions that you can look at when it comes to factory design suite. Class detection has Navisworks managing it, so that's the ultimate addition. I want to say thanks for watching. If you have any more questions about Factory Design Suite, please call us here at Advanced Solutions. Thanks again.